and welcome to the highest fuck podcast with your boy matt jackson aka ja fucking freak killer baby with his boy kyle cage foster you damn right and we're watching SummerSlam, baby right now i actually just got from like tearing up and shit We'll if you there. know me, you know what I'm talking about. But we're going to get there. You know it was first, right? Yeah. We're watching SummerSlam. It's me and Kyle tonight. We don't. We know where Joe's at, but we don't know where Joe's at. But anyway, so like and subscribe like always. Um, go and like and subscribe to Kyle Foster Music. Music. I was about to say <laughs> your last name is shit, then music. But Kyle Foster Music. Go yes. look him up. I'll tag it in the video. KFM. Same thing as my initials, just replace my actual last name with music. Yeah, with music. You know. So you go and hit that like, hit that fucking, hit hit what I'm going to put in, I'm going to tag him in it. You hit that thing, go over his channel, fucking hit subscribe, baby. Notification bells on both channels so you can get, you know, caught up with everything that we're doing, blah, blah, blah. But definitely like and subscribe. Um, Summer Slams tonight. So we have had such a, like, a, a, a an emotional jerk here, I guess. With some of the matches, like it's it's something else tonight. I think. Yeah. A lot um, on the line tonight. A lot on the line tonight. Um, the first match was women's title. Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan. Yeah. Custody of Dominique. <laughs> custody of Dominique. We know who won that custody. But the thing was, the match was going pretty good. You know, um, Rhea looking better than ever. Liv looking good. That dirty Dom's out there. You know, Rhea and him are, you know, back together, whatever the fuck you want to call that. That's called a weird fucking situation, if you ask me. <laughs> They're both married. Fucking weird as hell. But, it's kayfabe, mixing yeah. with real life, whatever. All about the kayfabe. It's all about the kayfabe. Um, we're Sabu over here on this bitch. Um, or the Sandman. You know, when he got blind and he just wore that thing everywhere? Mm. We try to keep kayfabe. But, other than that, great phenomenal match. I thought it was good for what it was. Yeah. But what we saw from Rhea, a level did fantastic tonight as well. Dirty Dom looked like he was helping Rhea at that one moment. And uh, he's like, no, you can't hit her with a chair, baby, because you're going to get disqualified. Well, before that, Rhea had the spot with the uh, the dislocated shoulder. Oh, yeah, that part. Which I'm sure that was a, a work, work, but probably. she yeah. made it look good. We know too much of the insides, guys. Put the shoulder back into place. Well, wham, Kept right going. on that announcer's table, too. She, like, like... Ram that shoulder in that. Yeah, made me feel like it was real. She's tough, cookie. So you know, sometimes they blur the line between reality and 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 fake in a yeah. way. You know, especially kind of in the post McMahon. Oh yeah, era. definitely. Like, I mean, with Rhea though, she's just good. Like you think that arm's dislocated? Yeah, it could have been. It could have not been. Who knows? We don't really actually phys- physically know for a truth. Right. You know. Work or no work. Great spot. Makes her look tough. Makes her dominant. Makes her better than China. And I said that again. I will I will say this forever. I agree. Victoria, better than China. Rhea Ripley, better than China. Who else did I say earlier? I can't even remember. I don't remember. Strat- Statlander's better than yeah. China, you know? So, and that's not knocking China. Rest in peace, but... Um, just the game has evolved. And the game has evolved. Simply put. <laughs> and China was a tough bitch. But I don't know. So you think. Let's go fantasy here real quick. Rhea Ripley versus China. Who you got? Rhea Ripley. Exactly. Rhea Ripley. I mean, if we were back in the 90s, maybe China. Yeah. Well, but Rhea now Ripley we're in 2020. Was, uh, a child. Yeah. So, yeah. She would have <laughs> been a child. So that would have been an easy win. But we're in the D's times now. Rhea would have totally annihilated China. That's pretty believable victoria too which victoria loved that when i told her that she was like i ain't even pay him to say this she was on live she was like i didn't even pay him to say this this is his real thoughts i was like you damn right they are yeah you gotta pay me to, i told her time. i said you ain't gotta pay me to say that bit you ain't gotta tell you ain't gotta pay me to say that i will i'm telling you genuinely you're better than china either way i know we're talking about china a little bit too much but the rhea ripley match Liv morgan dirty dom Crazy spots. You, you know, mentioned the crazy, chair. The chair. So, Dom 
grab the chair from Rhea because Rhea was going to use the chair on Liv, which you don't need a chair on Liv, really. Yeah. You know well, you what I'm saying? You get disqualified. You get disqualified. And so Dom's like, no, no, don't do this, mommy, blah, 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 blah. Who knows what he actually said. But he grabs a chair. Mommy gets mad. She's like, what the fuck, Dom, blah, blah, blah. He explains his case. He's like, oh, you can get disqualified, blah, 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 whatever he said. Who gives a fuck? Next thing you know, you know, that's how live one. That's how live one. So, prediction wrong. <laughs> even though y'all didn't hear my prediction because you two fucking fucked my whole shit up. But I predicted Rhea Ripley to win that. And it didn't happen. And ultimately, Liv Morgan gets the custody of Dominic. <laughs> this man. Look, we had this match back in the day. Ray Mysterio versus Eddie for the custody of Dominic. And it's happening all over again. Um, it was 20, 20 years later. So Liv is Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're a savant. Oh, he's a savant. Anyway, so that match went down. I think it was a phenomenal match. I don't know what I would rate it as, but I give it a 10 because of Rhea Ripley. I give it an 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10. That's probably a better um, probably a better review on that. Yeah. 8 out of 10. That's probably better. I'm going to give her a 10 because she's Rhea Ripley. Joe has to deal with this too. Well. So, but your numbers are better because that's more... Of course. It's more realistic than mine. Yeah. Completely. Usually. I'm marking out over Rhea. So we got to like take two numbers off of mine. Yeah. You got 8.5 on her. I'm fine with that. <laughs> I'm cool with an 8.5. Because I get it. I get what you're seeing with that. I, I get didn't it. say 8.5. I said 8. Oh, well, you said 8. Never mind. I'm putting Let's, the 0.5 on yeah, it. I didn't mean uh, to. I kind of, maybe I heard that. I don't know. Whatever. Putting words in your mouth. It's fine. Anyway, so 8.8. 8, okay, 8. 8. So, take two off of my number, makes it the right number. Sure. Okay, I think that's what we do now. We just right. take two off of mine. Yeah. Or one, probably. Because, you know, because it might be a nine, you know. Or if you're biased the other way, we add two. Yeah, if I'm biased, it's add two. Okay, that's rules. That's good. That's good shit. That's good shit. Okay, so, the better, if, if I mark over you and I throw a ten, it's probably what the other guy says. <laughs> it's more realistic, not me. But if I'm non-biased, sure. What was the second match? Second match was, was Braun Breaker. Final title, yeah. Braun Breaker versus Sami Zayn. All For seven the, minutes of it. Seven minutes. Maybe six minutes. Maybe six, seven minutes right there. It's like, like one of my songs, you know? Uh, well, one of my extra long songs. But anyway, so we had a good minute with Sami and Braun Breaker. That was a pretty decent match. Had some good spots in it. Um, what do you remember from it? Not much. Not much. I know. It was a, kind of a quick match, too. But I think Braun Breaker kind of dominated, to be honest. Yeah, he did. Oh, 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 that one spot when he did that fucking uh, Steiner recliner better than his own uncle. Yeah. He, he topped Papa Pump like crazy, bro. He stood there for a minute, bro. Y'all go back and look at that shit. If y'all didn't see it, look back at it. Look, he stands there for a goddamn minute, bro. And then he fucking gets his What's balance. This? And then he goes, Stein, it's a Frankensteiner, right? Yeah, Frankensteiner. Steiner recliner. Oh, never like mind. I, move. Never mind. Never mind. My mind did say something yeah. different. Sorry about that, guys. Just clarifying. Yes, thank you for that. Frankensteiner, not Steiner recliner. That's the fucking, the, uh, the Rusev finisher. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Okay. Other than that, but I think that was one of those matches, you know, there's like, typically the pay-per-views have been having like five matches, but SummerSlam is what, seven? I think tonight, so. I think so. We've only one of, the, one of these matches had to be pretty short. Yeah. So we've had like four matches so far. We've had Rhea and Liv. We've had Sammy and Braun. Mm -hmm. We've had... We'll wait on that one. And we've had what was before that one? Before what? Punk. Well, you had a U.S. title match. Oh, yeah, Logan. So we had Slogan title. Logan versus L.A. Knight, better known as Eli Drake. Yeah, dummy. Either way, that was a good match. Yeah. Look, that part that Logan did, that crazy Ooh. fucking luchador fucking thing he did, off the ropes onto the outside, you gotta give credit where credit's due. Well, he's, he's athletic. Athletic. So, so it was a lot of people. I yeah, mean, I know, I know. But at know, least they Logan. don't have to hold a belt and only show up every three months. <laughs> you know. Yeah, but see, Logan's doing a good job. He's doing a good job. He's selling tickets. He's getting them buy rates in. Whatever yeah. the fuck they got. They, he's getting them, right? You know what else does a good job? Who? Washing machines. 
Oh, yeah. Washing machines are really good, too. They're probably better than Logan. Probably. Probably. At, yeah. at least at least they're cleaner. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Goddamn, did that. Anyway, so, Logan LA Knight's match was really good. I, I mean, I liked it for what it was. I, I know I'm a little... I'm always high. We know if MGK was going to get involved. Oh, that's what pissed me ass. off. So he had two security guards at the fucking thing when Logan comes out. He daps up the security guard. The other one's got a hat in his fucking hand. I'm like, Fred Durst? No. Too small. <laughs> right? So I don't know what the hell I was thinking. Then next thing you know, fucking bitch ass fucking Machine Gun Kelly turns his head. And oh my God. I was like, oh shit. I stood up and was like, all right, what the fuck? You know? MJK, uh, MGK, whatever the fuck the stupid name is. He stole some fucking dude's name, and now he's Machine Gun Kelly. That's actually, look him up. Machine Gun Kelly is someone else. Mm. He ain't that hard. Either way, skinny little bitch comes out there and helps, or tries to help Logan. Tries to help Logan. I went pee on this one. So, by the time I got out of the bathroom, (laughs) I've been holding uh, pee for a minute. Took me a minute. And uh, by the time I got out, LA done won. And um, great match. We got a match starting right now, but we had LA Knight, blah, blah, blah. That was a good match, right? Yep. I hate to say the blah, 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 but our our cup of tea is CM Punk versus Drew, right? We've been looking forward to this for I don't know how fucking long now, hoping for our guy to win, which is yeah. CM Punk, guys. And it was kind of messy, man. It was messy. It was kind of messy. That last uh, Claymore... I don't think Punk was on that key. It looked okay. I thought Punk did well, though. He did as really good. As far as, like, you know, to not come back from injury and, and just to not even be in the ring that much until his AEW days. Yep. You know, I thought he did well. I was worried. And he was he wearing... He might not do too well. But. He was wearing Bret Hart gear, which chops him off. Like, I makes love Bret Hart colors. Yeah, I love it. Well, no, no. Yeah. The designs were Bret, too. Huh. Go back and look at Brett's tights. They were almost damn near the same thing. Little tiny details like that. Good shit. CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre kind of pissed me off, and I cried, guys. Yes, I teared up. I cried. My son comes over to me. He's like showing me these Deadpool pictures, and I'm like, "Your father is like in the middle of like <laughs> crying at the moment." But <laughs> I will, I will, you know, like I know what to say because I'm like sitting here in my emotions right now. I'm goddamn. Yeah, so, yeah, so, CM Punk, uh, we'll, just, we'll just get this short, like, we, like CM Punk and Dramatic Retire was good for what it was, right? It was. It was good for what it was. But, CM Punk's dumbass, oh, damn, shut the hell up. <laughs> He's worried about a stupid bracelet. And, oh, yeah, shut just call, hell up. call it for like it is. It's like, it it's, was dumb. It was dumb. It was stupid as fuck. It's like me fighting over a fucking bracelet, which I get it. It doesn't have his, my kid's name on it. It doesn't have a kid's name on it. He's got his wife and a dog's name on it. And I get what he says. A dog is just like your child. Like, if you love that dog just as much as you love, a, like, you would love your child, then I get that. Dog yeah. parents well, or I mean, cat yeah. parents. Or, I, don't, I don't have kids. You do. I do. I have two of them. But, do you have any animals? Are you a cat dad I or mean, a dog yeah, dad? but I, I don't think it's the same. It's not the same. So, I think Punk's a little bit... We'll do sign language so the viewers don't know what I'm saying right now. <laughs> so anyway, so CM Punk's fine. We love him. He's the best in the world, bro. I'm wearing a shirt. He's but the best he in the world. his emotions get the best of him. Yeah, he let the stupid bracelet make him lose. GTS, Sorry, CM Punk. GTS Seth Rollins. Hey, GTS That opened CM- the door for McIntyre. And then Rollins recovered and counted the one, two, three. That was it. And, you know, I didn't want that to be a one, two, three either, bro. Because you know you wanted Punk to win. We're punkers. Our yeah. favorite wrestler is CM Punk. Well, you know, our main guy is CM Punk. Um, and that's what me and you got in common. You know, we're the Punk guys. Joe, not so much. Joe Cool, no. he don't like Punk at all. But he probably, I don't know who he was going for this night. We well, wouldn't and know, Punk, Joe's like, and I love Punk too, just, just as much as you. But yep. like, you know, Punk was my favorite wrestler in 2012. It's 2024 now. I know you're looking at me weird. Oh, I know. That's because like, he's not actually my favorite if you're talking about current wrestlers. Because sure. he hasn't been a wrestler for a minute, right? Yeah, exactly. It's been Seth and Dan. He hasn't wrestled in a long time. And Dan Hell's in there. He's, he's, on, he's one of the older wrestlers on the roster. He is not that old. 
But he is one of the <laughs> older is. wrestlers like, on the like roster. He's like 40 some years old, right? Yeah, he's like 45. 45, yeah. I mean, yeah, part. like the only people older that I can think of off the top of my head are AJ Styles and R Truth. Yeah, R Truth. Oh well, fucking R Truth is fucking fifty some years old right now. And Mysterio. Yeah, he's. But it's 60. like you just wonder, you know, how much longer does CM Punk have? Can we can we believably see CM Punk as world champion again? Are you asking me? Because yeah, I'm just asking yeah. the. Yep. Well, you say yes. Well, y'all say. I don't know, I don't know if I'm convinced. Comment down below if y'all will comment and stop being shy. Comment down below whether or not CM Punk's got a world title run in them or not. And I'll take any comments. Just do not cuss us out. And because YouTube's going to take down your bad comments if you post something bad. So I have no control over that. So if your comment gets deleted, it's not me. Yeah, just make sure it's not sexual. Yeah, don't make it sexual. <laughs> you know, because don't share your music either. Because <laughs> they might call you a sexual solicitation or some shit like that. Like I got earlier. For sharing one of my songs, it's crazy. But anyway, so CM Punk, we're gonna um, we're gonna uh, finish this up. Well, finish this half up. CM Punk's match, Drew McIntyre, good shit, bad shit. That's all I'm gonna say. It was good and bad. It was horrible. It was good. We've been waiting for a long time. I put his shirt on tonight. I'm glad he didn't put his necklace on too. I sat there and held Rhea Ripley's Funko Pop during the last bit of her match. Still couldn't win. So my childlike self. That shit didn't work ever. Yeah. Wearing their shirts and all that shit. It's just a matter of whether or not they're booked or not, you know? Yeah. But anyway, CM Punk, still the best in the world. Still best in the world, right? Always. Always. We're CM Punk fans for the rest of our life. Fuck you if you don't like them. Love y'all guys. Peace. Anyway, this is the half of the pod. Either I'm finishing it or we'll finish it together. Who knows? But we will check you back in a minute. And I'm back. Um, this is Matt Jackson. <sighs> And, uh, well, the uh, SummerSlam is over, and, um, well, Mr. Kyle Foster Moore had to get out of here. He had to get to the house. It's late, kind of, and he had to get back to the house, so he's not going to finish the show with me. But we're going we're gonna to go back into where we forgot. I forgot to talk about Nia Jax and Bailey. So, Nia Jax and Bailey was an okay match. Um... I don't know what Kyle would say, but it was okay. Um, then we had um, after that match. See, I'm just gonna say that was a good match. You know, there was some good spots in the Nia Jax and Bailey, but whatever. I need to change. I need to turn my turn my shit down, or at least pause it for a minute because I don't want to get copyright infringement. But anyway, so Nia Jax and uh, Bailey, good match. Um, it was okay for like the size difference and all that. Um, I don't know why Bailey um, was looking like Tegan Knox, but it's fun. Uh, I liked her outfit. Uh, I liked her outfit. Um, Nia Jax actually ended up winning that match, so now we have Nia Jax as a world champion. Um, after that was it was Gunther. And Damian Priest for the World Championship. So SummerSlam saved the two World Championships for the for the two last matches, which, in my opinion, was probably their best bet. You know, um, so we had Damian and Gunther. We were out recording a pod during the beginning of the match because we had to talk about a lot of stuff in the middle of the well, somewhat in the middle of the show. It really wasn't really in the middle of the show because we only had like like two matches or whatever after the fact but but um but anyway um as soon as i wanted to get on the pod and like start this thing cm punk's match was on so i was like you know i can't start it yet we'll start after cm punk's match so but um so we missed a little bit of gunther and damien in the beginning but i don't think we missed a lot but i think we did because uh, by the time we came inside gunther was bleeding from his chest so now I'm wanting to rewatch this match and, you know, see myself where Gunther got cut by Chop. So you're telling me, like, that was, I mean, this happens. This happens, man. You get chopped hard enough, a blood abrasion or something like that happens or something like that. You could actually slice somebody. I don't, I don't know how it happened, but like I said, I got to rewatch the beginning of it to see where Gunther started bleeding from his chest. Wild moment. 
so when we came back in, he was already bleeding by the chest and shit. So if y'all watch the show, y'all know about where we were coming back in to, you know, watch it. But um, the match was pretty wild. I liked it. Um, I was like, oh shit, is actually Damien going to beat Gunther? I mean, it would be believable if he could beat him. Because if you think about it, Sami Zayn beat Gunther at WrestleMania last year. So if someone little like him can beat him, then someone bigger than Sami can beat him, right? Well, Gunther and uh, Damien Priest, let me tell you guys, before I tell you guys, like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, I know I've been slacking a little bit on the channel, but we'll just call it mental awareness, and um, yeah, so um, just like and subscribe, notification bell, just hit that thing get notified whenever I upload anything, live streams, any of that stuff, it'll pop up in your feed quick, do that, uh, we need 500 subscribers on here, so let's get that shit, I love you guys, let's get it, anyway, so Damien Gunther, great fucking match, um, I didn't know where WWE was gonna go with this, but I, I know that Triple H is behind it all, so I was kinda figuring Triple H was gonna lean a lot towards Gunther, and in fact, was right, so, Gunther is the new, new world champion, and I can't be so hype right now because there are people sleeping. So, Gunther is the world champion, um, and that kind of helps me with the CM Punk losing earlier, which your boy literally teared up. I'm not lying. I literally cried a little. I didn't cry like full on cry. So you can't be sitting here telling me I'm a crybaby. Um. I teared up a little bit because of the whole emotional tearjerker it was. It was, um, we'll see, the only person in that ring that I've ever met personally was Drew McIntyre. I met Drew McIntyre back at WrestleMania 30, and so I kind of take that into somewhat of the, the equation a little bit. But I've been a CM Punk fan longer than that. So, you've got Gunther winning the World Championship, uh, kind of like, um, like, I guess helped me a little bit through the CM Punk losing his first match back. I mean, who the fuck booked that? Let me find out who booked that. No, I'm just playing. But anyway, so... Like, Gunther and Damian Priest was a good match, man. It just was good, and Gunther is a world champion. So, well, let's get past that a little bit. The main event was kind of like... So, they... I really can't remember. Okay, okay, that's what it was. Okay, I remember correctly. Miz and R-Truth are the hosts of SummerSlam. So, it was the Miz and the R-Truth in the ring. They're hyping people up. They're telling them, oh, this is the, this is the biggest attendance for SummerSlam, blah, 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 57,000. I'm sitting there like, oh, that's a little number. Kyle says, you know what? You know, Rawls and SmackDowns are like 15,000. So, I was like, okay, okay, I get that. But 100,000 people would have been like a big thing, right? But they come out there and they say that shit, blah, blah, blah. Grayson Waller. And that stupid ass Austin Theory comes out, and they talking shit. Next thing you know, they get messed up. They get beat up by somebody comes out. Hold on, hold on. It was our truth in the Miz, but somebody came out. Yeah, now I can't remember. It's weird, right? Anyway, if you saw the match, you know what happened. I mean, not the match, but if you saw that segment, sorry, wrong word, segment, if you saw the segment, you know what happened, but uh, if you haven't seen SummerSlam, go and watch that shit, good, it was in Cleveland, Ohio, where the Browns live, you know, when you take a shit in the toilet, there's the Browns, you know, um, either way, have you taken your daily Russo, uh, Russo today, you know, uh, but anyway, so, um, Last match, you know, you have, you know, they had Solo Sokoa come to the ring. He does his thing. He gets to the ring, right? Well, Cody Rhodes is still in his bus, in his American Nightmare bus, chilling for a minute. He gets up. He walks out of his bus. Someone's got his dog. He brings Pharaoh or Pharaoh, 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 something like that. Pharaoh, I think. He bring. He like. He doesn't even take her all the way 
to Gorilla. He like he walks with the dog for a little bit. He meets up with that fucking asshole fucking Arn Anderson. Double A piece of shit. Walks up to him. They have a little talk. Arn Anderson's like, you got friends. And basically what he was going to say is, you got friends in high places. But I don't know if he could say that because of Garth Brooks. Who knows? But I'm the guy that's going to bring that to you um, and make you think about that. So maybe he couldn't say friends in high places because it might be copyrighted by Garth Brooks. Who knows? But um, uh, so he says that you got friends and he, he pointed up. So it was kind of like a signal saying you got friends in high places. I'm thinking. Anyway, they talked for a minute. I think Arn Anderson talked to him too much. Um, and then they hugged. And then Cody, um, sorry about that. Cody walks a little bit more he walks to the woman who makes his jacket and she puts the jacket on him nice touch good job cody giving respect to your um seamstress seems seamstress if i can say that right um respecting the person that makes your gear hats off to that because gear makers so it's, it's a hard job so she makes this fantastic jacket. I called him a wind chime earlier, but it's fun. So she dons him in the jacket. He puts this cool skull mask on. Somehow I missed it at WrestleMania last year. I, I went to the bathroom or something, and like his whole entrance was over. So I finally got to see it, and um, I was like, oh, that's really cool. And then I looked back, and I was like, oh, Maynard, look at this. And, well, he wasn't awake at the time or something. And I was like, well, shit, okay, well, never mind. And, um... Well, the, the mask was really dope. He had the skull, the wings coming off of it. Pretty sick. Um, but he took so long, guys. He's taking just as long as I am to tell you about this match. Um, he took a long time. He got into the ring, had that conversation, blah, blah, blah. He gets the ring, and then I went to go pee because I'm like, shit, let me go pee before they even touch. You know, before they even start wrestling, let me fucking go to pee. I went to go pee, and next thing you know, they're already fucking whatever. But it wasn't too much, so I didn't miss too much. But the whole match was wild, because you had the bloodline rules. Okay, so the whole time, I'm sitting here forgetting it's bloodline rules. You know, for some reason, I'm just like, I don't know why I was blanking on that. But I guess it's because I was joking too much. I was like, oh, look at Stardust, you know. Um, But, uh... So, you know, you had the bloodline come out there. You had uh, you had um, the Gorillas of Destiny, their old school name. That's what I'm going to call them by because they don't have a name right now. So, Gorillas of Destiny, God, Tama Tunga, and, and uh, Tunga Loa. They were with Solo when he came out, and they put a little bit of beat down. Next thing you know, you have, you know, you have Kevin Owens comes out. Kevin Owens comes out, and he stuns somebody. Randy Orton came out. He RKO'd somebody. At least he didn't RKO Tama Tonga. That's one thing I didn't want to happen, but Tonga Tonga got stunned by Kevin, which is fun. So that happens. And then next thing you know, Jacob Fatu comes out. Y'all know how Jacob Fatu is. He's a werewolf. He comes out and he puts Cody through the announcer's table. He freaking put him through the announcer's table. Pretty fucking wild. I thought Cody was done after that, but obviously he wasn't. Next thing you know, um, shit, the match keeps going, shit like that. Um, you know, back and forth, watch the match. Um, I'm just here to promote the match, tell you it was good, probably spoil it, but just go watch and see it happen. Um, then, you know, I'm sitting here like, is Roman coming back? And Kyle says something too, I think. Something like that where, I don't know, I can't remember it because like, it was so hyped tonight. It's so hard to, um, yeah, keep up with all this hype going on. But, uh, so, yeah, the man, the original tribal chief, he, his music hits, boy. Dude, it took me nothing but one second to realize who the fuck that was. And I stood up with my finger to the air and uh, acknowledged our tribal chief. Even though I have two tribal chiefs, to be honest, on the show, I have two tribal chiefs. It's um, Solo Sokoa and it's Roman Reigns. They they are the tribal chief to their tribes, and that's all it is to it, right? Well, Roman Reigns comes out. Comes out, he's all beast mode, looking good. 
comes out there and he Superman punches my boy Solo Sokoa. And there's a long thing in between that until Cody picks up Solo. He's looking and staring at Roman. Hits him with the crossroads. And it's over. Um, but this episode is brought to you by... Not really brought to you by, but I'm going to promote it. New Realm Brewing Company. This is what me and Kyle was drinking on tonight. And these are... They're really good. They're really good IPAs. There was one lager in the in them. And the reason he got this um, sampler pack was because there is a Luchador beer in there. A lime lager. 4.5 alcohol volume. 12 fluid ounce. New Realm Brewing Company Limador Lager. And I got hype over it. I was like, oh shit, that's a Luchador mask. That's pretty cool. And I drank it. And I... This is the least of, I didn't like this one, um, cause it tasted like sparkling water. Um, but, um, but yeah, so we were drinking on these. These are actually really good. I have killed at least one, two, three, four of them. Well, not four altogether, three and going on my fourth one. And I am, I feel like I'm good. You know, I'm not slurring my words. I'm. Yeah, it's just like a like a soda to me at this point. But I'll anyway. So go out, you, go out there and get you a new realm. If you like drinking beer, you like these IPAs. They got hazy session IPA, Whammer Jammer, four percent. Whammer Jammer is actually a really good one. If I had to pick my favorite out of the pack, uh, I might have liked the hazy like a fox better than. Um, I don't know, there was a psychedelic rabbit one that was really good too. But it had um passion fruit in there, so that one is a not. So but I think Hazy Fox is my favorite. Um I'm gonna go with the Whamma Jamma for the second, and then third is the hate to say it, the Alice in Wonderland. And then last one on my rating list is the Lamador. It was the worst one out of the four. Still some good stuff. It's kind of crazy that you get a lager and all those IPAs, but whatever. Anyway, so tonight's SummerSlam was good. I just needed to promote a little bit of what I like. Um, New Realm is an okay brewing place. I like them. But they cannot be so uh, Voodoo Ranger or uh, any of those other ones. Either way, this is not what this show is about. But I just wanted to throw that in there. That's what we were drinking on, and um, yeah. Um, so yeah, like I said, tonight SummerSlam, pretty damn good. Logan Paul's match, good. I mean, Logan Paul did some shit. I know my son don't like that motherfucker, but that motherfucker down did some shit, bro. Um, and he lost his belt tonight. So, if you don't like Logan Paul, you should be happy. Either way, that has been the Highest Fuck Podcast with your boy, Matt Jackson. And, in the beginning of the show, Kyle Foster Cage. You can go look at Go. Okay, it's going to be in the description. Or, I'm going to tag him somewhere in this video. Hit that thing. Go to his YouTube channel. Check out his music. His music is great. And... Like, subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell for both channels, and just keep it going. Let's get this love going, and let's do this stuff. So, you all know what time it is. We are out. Like who? Elvis Presley. Check you in the next one. I love you guys. Have a great night. Like and subscribe.